what's a celebrity encounter that had a that you think about a lot that had a big impact on you? All right, it, 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 it's one that I've been pretty outspoken about, so a lot of people might know this one. But um, remember my uh, my heavy metal identity phase yeah, sure God, i loved motley crew sure i wanted to party like motley crew yep. and that's all that mattered in the world um and i was 13 years old living in canada my dad was the president of uh nabisco canada motley crew's coming it's uh maple leaf gardens this is the the hockey arena motley crew's got a show at maple leaf gardens on october 25th of 1987. i'm losing my mind because i love motley crew um my dad um nabisco happens to have a skybox in maple leaf gardens and my dad knew damn well that nobody at nabisco gave a fuck about a motley crew concert so nobody it, that could get access to the skybox right i'm sure the the staff <laughs> right the factory loved them <laughs> right the c-suite not that into them <laughs> Right. So uh, my dad knew the skybox would be available. He knew how much I loved Molly Crew. He said, he got, said, said, you know, hey, you know, I'm going to do something great for my son. I'm going to bring him to the Molly Crew concert. You know? And I say to my dad, 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 watching Molly Crew behind a plate glass window sucks. You know, like up in the skybox. I was always kind of embarrassed of all that stuff. And um, my dad said, all right, well, if you can do better than, uh, you know, and um, then it was the day before the concerts, October 25th, I recall, it was a Sunday, Saturday before. Um, like, it's on TV, like, the Motley Crue, these assholes in our city, like, whatever, they burnt something or other. Like, it's like, you know, outright. And I'm like, they're in Toronto now. The, the concert's tomorrow. So I deduced or induced that they were in a hotel. And so... I had to find them. And, Sutton uh, Place? Wait, no, this is Toronto. So Toronto. Sutton Place, where'd you look? Uh, well, I, I, I didn't even zero in on a hotel. I yeah. called everyone in the hotel, in the Yellow Pages, every hotel in the Yellow Pages. I right. just started at the top of the list and, and for hours. Yeah. Now, like, I knew, like, uh, the band members real names like Nikki Nikki Six is like Frank Carlton Ferrano Jr. Like this is yeah, like a Vince, good name change. Vince Neil yep. is Vincent Wharton. Yep. And 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 I'm like they're not gonna check into the hotel as Nikki Six. They're not gonna check into the hotel as Frank. Cur I was like yeah. they're, it's the, I thought they're gonna check into the hotel under the name of their manager. I go run into my room and I check the the tape sleeves for for looking for the name of the manager. It says Doc McGee, famously the manager of Motley Crue. And I just went to the yellow pages and I started calling. And said hello, uh, please put me through to Mr. Doc McGee's room, please. After just a few hours, they fucking there was one false alarm, but after a few hours, I I was patched through to a room. This guy picked up the phone. Uh, I said, hello, is that Doc McGee? And he said, no, this is Doc's brother, Scott, who's this? And I was like, is it Motley Crue? Like, that, like, and now he says, uh, who is this? Like, how'd you get this number? And I told him, I said, hey, man, I just called every hotel in the Yellow Pages. Like, is the crew there? And uh, and, and he said, like, you know, wow, that's awesome. Like, uh, I'm really impressed by that. Like, would you like me to put you on the list? Please for come murder process? us. <laughs> yeah, right. So I got... Uh, he put me on the list for backstage passes, like fifth row tickets, fifth row center. Like uh, my, I still went up to the Nabisco Skybox um, to place my boom box right next to the little speaker to bootleg the concert. And um, then uh, my dad and I went to my seat and um, my dad took pictures of me with uh, Nikki Six and, and Tommy Lee. Tommy Lee and I are like both little kids. Yeah, that, um, it really made a monster out of me, man. I remember kind of having the sense that, uh, like, man, you know, I wanted to uh, meet Did it guy. feel like destined or something? I mean, I didn't have anything that I really cared to say. I didn't have anything important to say to them. Like, I didn't, you know, there wasn't any real interaction to have, but just by virtue of the fact that I was, uh, like standing next to them just because of my own sheer determination. Like, yeah. uh, I, I just feel like that, that was empowering. Then he got me with yeah. the entire band, uh, many years later, 
when Tommy reached out to me, he says, dude, I'm back together with Motley Crue. We've been rehearsing for it before they went on the Carnival of Sins tour. He says, we're flying in on a helicopter for this big show. Dude, I want you to get on stage, do something super fucked up and introduce us. And uh, I, I, I got on stage and, and um, I smashed a light bulb over my head and, and uh, cut, cut my tongue with a piece of broken glass and bled all over myself and put war paint on my face and introduced, ladies and gentlemen, Motley fucking crew. And the girl from your Spanish class was like, <laughs> oh, dude, it's still not impressive. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Touche. Uh, <laughs> hey, did you like that? Did you like that? Yeah, did you like it, though? You want more? Don't want to work? Would rather watch videos of me grab-assing with people? First of all, go up here to subscribe. And then go up here to uh, watch more clips. This is like when the weatherman says that there's a high-pressure system coming in. I'm not really used to the green screen.